Good day and welcome to our watercolor journey. Today we're going to paint this scene. I'm going to paint on hot press paper. It's called potentate and I've never used it before. The materials I'm using is cobalt blue, cerulean, lavender, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, quinacridin scarlet, transparent sienna and Payne's grey blue. As I said, paper, potentate hot press, 100% cotton. The brushes I'm going to use is a Princeton 1 inch mop, Escoda Ultimo number 14 mop, Rosemary and Co. Sable number 5 round, and also the Windsor and Newton number 1 rigger. First of all, I'm wetting the paper. We're going to see if we, if we can do a landscape on hot press paper because normally people say hot press is only suitable for detailed work. The paper is very, very smooth. And as you can see, the paint is just flowing all over the page. So I think it's quite important to get those cooler values at the back and the warmer values at the bottom. Let your painting dry. I'm just going to wait a, a certain section of this painting now. Because I'm going to create little mountains and little valleys in that area. And I want soft edges at this point. I'm just mixing some colors up for the trees and branches and bushes in the back area. As you can see, lavender is really a lovely color for things that's in the back background. I'm building up values to the front and you can see the distance that it creates now. I'm adding some more lavender pushing that area way to the back. Also using cerulean, which is a cool blue. Okay, I'm just creating some directional lines and things at this point. With hot press paper, you are not able to get dry brush effects. So in other words, all the marks that you make is exactly the way that you paint it. I'm using warmer colors in the front area. That will help to push the middle ground and the background way to the back. I'm really playing around with various greens. mostly I used cooler and warmer colors in the yellows and the blues to create some variation. Here you can see again the mark that you make is exactly the way that you painted it on the paper. But we still want some texture in our painting. In other words, 
we almost have to do some negative painting. At this point, I must say, I really enjoy working on this paper. Completely different to cold press and rough paper. But it really works well. And I'm quite impressed with um, the potent, potent type paper. Because it doesn't buckle at all at this point. And now it's time for the painting to dry again. I'm going to, going to show you how I create this tree on the left hand side. We do not get dry brush effects properly. So each and every mark is exactly the way that you put it out on the paper. I'm really playing around with warm and cooler greens to create dimension within this tree area. I'm adding some blues, yellows, and even the paint's grey. And this will help to create a lot of variation within those trees. I'm building up the values at this point again, just to bring that tree completely to the foreground. You will also see that I use the billy of a brush to create these marks and I'm still using warm and cool colors to create variation. So remember to leave some light gaps in between for each of the tree. Now it's time to create the branches and the trunks of a tree. going to make it look like there's a bunch of trees bundled together in that area. And once again I'm playing around with the colors at this point. And as the paper is so smooth it runs and moves in its own direction and creating interesting shapes and patterns at this point. And I like the way that it creates dark and light. the 
moment it still looks like quite a bit of a mess but it will get there <laughs> Leave some segments between your foliage and let the branches go in between. Because that will give it quite a bit more of a natural look. Now I'm coming in with my rigger. creating lots of fun marks and tweaks at this point. see that I'm using quite a variation of colors to create these uh, little branches and so on on the tree. One other thing about the hot press paper is that it dries up quite a bit faster than the other types of paper. I definitely think that I will use this paper again for landscapes you just need to adapt your style a little bit and work with what the pain gives you it definitely helps you to be loose and spontaneous in your painting building up values again especially in the foreground area because we definitely want to create distance in the painting itself and also remember we want connections between everything in the painting I like the way the grass has turned out in the foreground. Light against dark, warm against cool. I thought I was finished, but I decided to add a little bit more value and bring that, those trees to the foreground even more. I think you can definitely see that it's starting to make an, a big difference. This is our final painting. Please like and subscribe 
and please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching. See you next time.